Well, welcome back to Inside Healthcare. Infertility is more common than most people think. Health officials report that one in eight couples are affected by infertility in the United States. Well, we learned of a Minnesota mom of three who was a uh, who is passionate about surrogacy and how she has helped two different families by carrying their babies. And we are so pleased to have her with us here in the studio to share her fascinating story. And we're glad to have with you Josie Dol Dolliger. So thank you for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Before we talk about your passion as a surrogate mom, just tell us a little bit about you and your family. I mentioned that you're a mom, you and your husband are yeah. a mom of uh, we, three. Yes, we have three beautiful teenagers. One's off to college and two in high school. They're very active. Our daughter was a swimmer um, in, in college. She didn't swim this year just because she's going to be wrapping up in December and the season extends beyond um, you know, just this semester. And then our boys are both uh, three sport athletes, so yeah. And you're also a marathon runner. I said. am, yes, yeah, yeah. And I and even- a professional. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, and dental hygienist, so <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, that's in in of itself, it's a, uh, you know, it's more than a full-time job, what you do and stuff. And then also you had, I had the ple pleasure of meeting you and your family, beautiful family, and that um, you have said, um, when you were in college, you were you had your first daughter, your first baby, your daughter, mm -hmm. and that within days of her birth, you had a medical emergency. We, what we happened? Did. Yes. Um, so my husband was in the military, and so we had gone. It was family day. They were preparing to go to Iraq, and it was family day. So we went up to Camp Ripley to visit for the day, and we got back late that evening. <clears throat> I went to go change her diaper and she wasn't breathing. Uh, she just had like foam coming from her mouth and her nose. So I immediately, thankfully my, I was staying at my parents' house because um, she was just 12 days old. And so um, my mom was able to call 911. My, my dad and I started CPR immediately. The first responder actually ended up winning a life-saving award. Absolutely. Yep, <laughs> yeah. yep. So, yeah, we were all pretty traumatized. Um, we didn't really know. There was no, really no explanation. Um, they figured it was probably SIDS that I that we had caught. Oh, just wow. because, it, yeah, there was just no explanation of what happened. We ran her through a whole bunch of tests. Um, she continued to have some episodes, uh, minor episodes, not nothing like that first one. But um, she's fine. She's healthy. She's in college. Um, Oh, you got to be so proud of her, too. Yes, yeah. yeah, but very stressful. I mean, I suffered from PTSD from the whole ordeal, but recovered. I, I was going to ask, how did that yeah. impact you and your family? Yeah, I going mean, through that? Uh, I, I had a lot of hours of therapy, so, <laughs> yes. <clears throat> and my husband uh, did, didn't go to Iraq. They, he was probably just too much of a liability to take. Um, and so it was early in the war, and, and they decided to have him stay home. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And you're passionate. You have a passion as a surrogate mom. Tell us about yeah. that passion. Yes. So when I was pregnant with our third child, uh, we knew we were going to be done. He was going to complete our family. But I just um, didn't have the sensation that I was going to be done having babies, but we didn't want any more of our own. And so um, surrogacy was something that just felt like such a win-win. I could help other people and I could be pregnant and give birth. I, I love childbirth. If oh, I could do, um, if I could give birth for a living, that's what I would do, but it takes nine months of gestation. So, um, so anyway, it was just a, a great way to, uh, you know, enjoy the pregnancy again and, and Childbirth. Enjoy the pregnancy. Yes. <laughs> when and why? I mean, what was the timing on all of that? You're saying yes. you're done with your children, yeah. but why at the at that point? And when was that? Yes. Why? So um, I was pregnant with our youngest. Uh, he was born in 2008, and that's when I just my I, I talked to my husband, and we decided that surrogacy would probably be, be a great option. However, we were living in California at the time. And we just wanted to get settled back in Minnesota. And so um, the feeling, I would kind of suppress the feeling, and then it would come up with like a vengeance. Like I just, I don't know if you believe in callings, but it was something I just knew I needed wow. to do. And so finally, after about six years of talking about it, my husband said, maybe you should stop talking about it and just do it. And so um, I signed on with an agency here in Minnesota in Maple Grove. 
So mm -hmm. how do you go about doing that once yes. you have an agency and yes. then decide this is the time? And yes, there's a huge screening process. I mean, you have to qualify to be a surrogate. Um, and then you go through some psychological evaluations to make sure that you would be a good person to carry. And, um, and then you go through a matching process. And the agency was so wonderful. You know, I just said, I don't want to be matched with the, the top couple. I want to be matched with the perfect couple. And so they just said, um, you know, they kind of went through. I, I, had, I had, like, a few top things that I, I really wanted to carry for a local couple. That was kind of my um, top requirement or, you know, decision. Um, and so, they, yes, they matched us with a local Minnesota couple, and uh, I also wanted to stay in contact with them. I didn't know what that might look like, uh, <laughs> but the couple also wanted to stay in contact. Um, and so, yes, I, I feel like they couldn't have given us a more perfect match. So, so as easy as you make it sound, yes. but um, obviously with, um, with infertility, with other couples, you struggle to try to get pregnant. Was it as easy as it sounds? I mean, so for some people, it, it is as easy as it sounds. I carried three babies. Uh, you go through IVF. Um, you take their embryo and you put it into my uterus, and I, you know, gestate the baby, and um, I, you know, the baby goes home. And so for us, it was that easy. Each time, it took the first time. Now it's not like that all the time. I think I might be rare. Um, a lot of people go through multiple transfers in order to get a successful pregnancy and, and healthy baby. So, And tell us about like but the first, you know, yes. like tell us about these little babies. Right? The yeah. first the first time, you know, it's, it's so new. It's brand new for all of us and um, I think from the surrogate side, we, we're so excited to get to know this couple, and, and I, I dreamed about, Just you know, I dreamed about them being this family, um, and so, yeah, it's just, a, a, it's just a lot of getting to know each other. It's, it's a brand new friendship, you know, and um, we're fortunate because we, we all got along. You know, the couple, my husband and I, it's, it's almost like we, we've been friends forever. So. And did you have a scheduled um, C-section, or was it just de natural delivery? And natural delivery, yep. Wow. Um, one of the sisters of the intended parents is a midwife. And so, you know, during our first initial phone call, they were like, we would love for her to be involved. And I just love childbirth so much. I mean, from the time I had our first daughter, after I had her, it was just my husband and I, I thought everybody should witness childbirth and Absolutely. so I was like the more the merrier everybody should come in and so um, yeah so the aunt the baby came and she was with me all day putting me in different positions I never had a midwife before um, I always delivered with the OBGYN and all of the sudden she gave me this so natural yes yes it was amazing because she put me in all of these different positions to get the baby to um, engage and uh -huh. um, yeah, so she was she was with me, uh, came to my house, was with me basically uh, through the whole delivery. And then I said, I think uh, when I care, we, we kind of knew I was going to carry their second baby. Um, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to come and see you. So she actually became my provider for the second baby oh. and, and then the third baby. So she was at all the deliveries. Wow. Yeah. And just tell us a little bit about the babies. So. Yes. So the first baby was born in 2014. Uh, they had a little baby boy, and um, I got very sick with him. Uh, the medications, uh, yeah, I, I lost a lot of weight, um, and so they were a little concerned I might not carry their second baby because I got so sick with him. Um, I became so sensitive to sweets. So even a banana was just like too sweet. Wow. Yeah, it was it was very bizarre. Um, and so yet yeah, he's he's now nine, um, and his sister is seven. And yeah, they they live in and Woodbury. The last one was just a year and a half ago. Or two yeah, years. she's she's going to be two next month. Wow. So yeah, hard to believe <laughs> that time went quickly. So yeah, uh, sweet family. So what was that? internally for you. I mean, emotion and everything to yes. go through something like that. I mean, 
I loved when I was pregnant with my children too. I mean, never felt more alive, and mm -hmm. and and I just can't imagine what it must have been like for you. Yes, I, I mean, I think that's the one thing that people, the biggest concern people have is how could how could you do that? You know, um, the emotional part, and um, I just because I. I just knew it was something I was meant to do. I was very clear with my extended family. We sent out a, a, a very well thought out email of just kind of setting boundaries of, this is what we've decided to do. We feel, I feel so passionate about it. And if you have any concerns or anything negative, please keep that to yourself. We only welcome positive. Um, positivity around surrogacy and so they did just that I feel so fortunate um, and the people that um, you know maybe didn't agree with it in my family they just didn't say anything and so um, it was yeah it was just very beautiful to be a part of um, and so many of my family members afterwards said gosh, if, if this was available so many years ago, some of my aunts said, I would have done this. I know, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I know that my, my older sister was never ever able to have children too, so I, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, you have remained, you feel like you're lucky that you've remained close to these families, yes. to these kids? Yes, I'm, I'm so fortunate. Um, I think it's, um, very rare what we have. Um, I think, um, I think that we've maintained such a close relationship, but that's because I think we've all desired it. Um, the first two babies, I was able to be—I was asked to be their godmother, and so uh, yeah, oh, I haven't wow. missed a birthday party. Um, very special occasions. Um, the the cool thing is, is when I thought about surrogacy, I imagined this couple. I imagined this baby. But I didn't imagine the extended family. We've gained a whole family. Oh. I mean, the yeah. You, you know, one of the grandpas of the babies said, "You know, Josie, you're just a part of our family. Um, our kids, our kids are a part of it. Um, you know, there's just so much love." Uh, the parents of the babies said that um, they can't have too many people to love their children, which I think is just beautiful. They mm -hmm. just. They just care so much about these kids, and they're so wanted. I love it how that you literally gave the gift of life to these two families, and and how you feel like you got a gift in return. Absolutely, yeah. That gift that just keeps giving, man. Right, and it will for forever, generations to come. Their family trees have been changed, and it's just so beautiful. Yeah. What would you say to anyone else that's listening about this? You know, the being a surrogate <coughs> mom about that whole process, and what yeah. would you say to them? Yes, um, I I'm an open book, and so I, I feel like um, when people have questions, I feel like I always want to give them honest, candid answers um, because I'm so passionate about it. And um, people who have watched, uh, it, it's very interesting. After I've had each baby. Um, people have been inspired to carry. So a coworker um, who I worked with during my first pregnancy has gone on to have two surrogate babies. Oh. And then when I carried my second, we were I up in the, si we were up in the St. Cloud yeah. area. And so, she, yeah, she's carried two surrogate babies. Um, and then we moved down to the Twin Cities when I was pregnant with a second. I also have another coworker who just had her second surrogate baby. Wow. Yes. How and inspiring. Yes. Yeah. And then um, I recently had a friend who I actually worked with in California who said, I'm going to do this. And so she's working on becoming a surrogate too wow. now that I've had the third. So it's really fun that it's just inspired. I mean, look at all these other families whose lives have been changed. Um, just by the gift of, you know, surrogacy and, and inspiration. So amazing, just yes. amazing. I love the story. I, as a news reporter, I had the opportunity to witness other births as well and stuff. Yes. So absolutely love. Thank you so much for sharing your story, yes. Josie. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor. <laughs> I appreciate really it. A pleasure to have you with us. Yes. So thank you so much. Yeah.